You're listening to another episode of the Just Go Bike Podcast. That's AKA Murph. And that's AP. And this is the podcast where we talk about cycling just for the fun of it. With tales from all over the nation, come for the bikes, stay for the fun, and leave with a smile. Well, hello, AP. Hi, Murph. How's it going? Well, I'm coming to you, quote unquote, live from my ice castle here in frigid Des Moines as we await <laughs> Snowmageddon 2024. Yeah, the first big snow event is happening here in the Midwest. And I don't. it might be stretching beyond the Midwest. I'm not really sure. But um, yeah, the weather reports and the news have everybody on edge, high anxiety. And as I look out my window right now, there are is zero precipitation how about where you are <laughs> well it has been snowing for some time in des moines oh um, but you know what all the snow means it's time to break out the fat bikes yes i have the fat bike ready and i also have my snowshoes ready Woo-hoo. yes very good yeah so um congratulations to all you snow bikers out there because you're about to get your chance yes it's going to be a fun rest of the week on uh, big fat tires but so before we get into today's topic um do you want to do some this is just for fun right some fun facts about the bicycle you ready oh you bet but i get to go first okay all right did you know orville and wilbur wright the brothers who built the first flying airplane operated a small bike repair shop in Dayton, Ohio, oh. and they used their workshop to build the 1903 Wright Flyer. Oh, interesting. Um, I probably should have looked this up before we recorded, but I wonder if that bike repair shop still exists. Maybe oh. it's a maybe it's a museum now. Well, anybody out there? Yeah, anybody out there in Dayton, Ohio, send us a little message and tell us if it's still there. And I will tell you, uh, maybe this is a little known fact, or maybe it's a very big fact, but the Wright brothers lived in Cedar Rapids, Mm. which is my hometown, with their family from 1878 to 1881. Wow. Yeah, of course, they were very young. I think they weren't even teenagers at the time. So maybe they were dreaming about airplanes, but at that time, there were no... Uh, airplane things happening here in Cedar Rapids, but we do have a street named after them, which is called Wright Brothers Boulevard. Oh, I have seen that uh, as I was going to the Cedar Rapids airport. So yeah. I guess, um, wow, there yeah. you go. That Your fun fact was even more fun than my fun fact. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but okay. <laughs> let, let me share another fun fact that may be more fun than the last fun fact. Oh, Okay. Mm-hmm. Fred Birchmore, at the age of 25, circled the globe by bicycle, and it was 1935 when he did this. Whoa. Yeah. So he pedaled 25,000 of the 40,000-mile trip, and you may be asking, why didn't he pedal all 40,000 miles? Mm -hmm. But it was because all of those extra miles were via boat, so he did not have the chance to ride a bike. He should have just been doing laps on the deck of the boat. I mean, come I was, on. Yeah, if, if trainers existed in 1935, he should have <laughs> just been doing that. But um, during his trip, he wore out seven sets of tires, and he was on his Reinhardt bicycle, which mm. is one speed and weighed over 42 pounds. Oh, my gosh. I hope he went the flat way around the earth. <laughs> I know. I wonder how he figured out his route. I wonder what maps were like in 1935. Uh, well, you could learn a whole lot more about it if you find and or read his book called Around the World on a Bicycle, which, uh, full disclosure, I have not read, but I okay. yeah. know about for this intro. <laughs> Interesting. And he, yeah. I also read that he got married in 1940, and for his honeymoon, him and his wife pedaled 4,500 miles Whoa. in Latin America on a tandem. Whoa. And you know what we say on Ragbri is that if you do Ragbri with a significant other, it will either make or break your relationship. And it sounds like Fred and his wife had a really wonderful relationship because they were able to make it that far on a tandem. (laughs) Yes. They went on to have four children and he lived to be 101 years old. So that is a testament to uh, cycling. But he, if you read about him, he was an avid hiker and biker and just a really big into anything outdoorsy so I wish I would have known Fred he seemed like a good guy I know yeah and he died in 2012 so we could have potentially known him if we had been smart enough at the time 
Yeah. I wonder if he did Ragbri. Oh, mm, probably not. Probably too easy for him, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. So moving on though, my next fun fact is in 2011, Austrian racing cyclist, Marcus Stockwell. No, I'm sorry, Marcus. I pronounced your last name incorrectly, but Marcus Stockwell drove an ordinary bicycle down the hill of a volcano. Mm. He attained the speed of 164 kilometers per hour, which is 102 miles an hour. <laughs> what? Okay. So that is spectacular, but the big question here would be why? <laughs> yeah. Why and why would, would you? One would assume and hope he was riding down the hill on the outside of the volcano and not down into the crater. <laughs> <laughs> well, and one would hope that there was a paved road or, you know, like the surface was of good quality because 102 miles an hour on a bicycle does not seem the safest thing or the smartest mm-hmm. thing. No, but hey, look, let Marcus do Marcus. And look, FYI, you could do the same thing on a mountain uh, where you wouldn't have lava to contend with. But that is look, true. He can, yeah. he can ask me for advice next time he tries it. <laughs> I know. I shouldn't say that. We should say congratulations to Marcus 2011. <laughs> that wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Congratulations. I'm glad you made it. Yeah. And then I, it makes me think of Denise Mueller, who on her bicycle went 183 miles an hour. Whoa, um, she's but at least, at least she was on the salt flats, right? So it yes. was like a really smooth surface. But anyway. I mean, actually, that's even a better accomplishment because she wasn't going downhill. Yes, you know? exactly. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so the last fun fact before we get to our episode is um, I have not tested this theory, but according to cycling science... A bicycle can stay upright without a rider as long as it's moving at eight miles an hour or faster. Oh, now, you know, I think I have tried this out when I was a little kid where you just sort of like push the bike using the seat. You try to like move it maybe into like where you're storing it or just goofing around with your friends. I probably wouldn't try it with my adult bicycle because I have too much stuff strapped to it. But (laughs) as a kid, it worked. (laughs) Yeah, and too valuable. So I definitely oh, yeah. would love to try it. Like, I don't know how you could try that. Maybe if you're, you know, well, you don't want to be cruising down a hill, but if you're going maybe seven miles an hour and you jump off your bike and then give it a push, <laughs> you could run alongside with it, I guess. I was thinking like a setup of hay bales or something, but yeah. Mm. Yeah. We'll so pre ride 2024 is going to get exciting, folks. I was going to say, next time we're <laughs> together in the flesh, we should uh, experiment with this bike. With this, yeah. I'm sorry, with this, uh, this scientific fact. Yes. Oh, I'm always in for a science experiment for sure. <laughs> or physics, whatever this may be. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Well, let's get into today's episode. Yes. So today's episode is a parrot talk. Yay. So you get a little bit more of me today. So I have intended to finish up the Clarence Pickard story that mm. I had started the last time I did a parrot talk. And I had thought at that time that he did a series of articles Well, it turns out it was really just the one article. So I've looked up several articles about one from later in his life and then one about his death and then one from the Memorial Rag Bride that was held in his honor. So cool. um, So it's just kind of a nice little series about Clarence. Total of four articles, but some of them are really short. So just kind of hang with me on this one. Awesome. And uh, I would assume most people know of Clarence Pickard or know his legend, but you've done plenty of episodes on him. Well, and I have to apologize ahead of time, since it is multiple articles about him, it will describe who he is and what he is famous for a couple different times throughout oh, good. the yeah. narrative. So I won't say it for an eighth time here, but <laughs> um, look, he's a really cool person, a really notable person. And he really made Ragbri what it is in that he brought national attention to the ride and um, the idea that anyone could do this kind of a epic journey. So awesome. All right. Well, let's get to it. Hello, podcast listeners, near and far. This is AP, so that's right. That means this is Parrot Talk. I've got a collection of articles for you today. I hope you really enjoy them. They're all about Clarence Pickard, the star of Ragbri from its earliest days. As I explained in the intro of this podcast, each article explains who Pickard is and what he's famous for, so I'm not going to go into that. I will say that I did a series of Parrot Talk articles about him in the past, the most recent being his article that he wrote for the Des Moines Register following his experiences on the first rag ride, the great bike ride across Iowa. So if you'd like to go back and to listen to that, 
Um, you can find it in the Just Go By podcast archives on SoundCloud. I had originally thought that he had written a series of articles, but it turns out that he actually only wrote just the one for the register and then gone on to do many incredible, amazing things for the rest of his life. Um, and indeed, after his life, he was celebrated still. He still is today. So I thought I'd kind of do a little selection of different articles about him from the last part of his life. Uh, I don't know if it's well known um, what he did with his time after Ragbri or how he passed. So I wanted to just kind of share that with you all. So the first article that I have picked out to share with you today is actually written by Chuck Offenberger, who many of you know as the Iowa boy who was a columnist for the Des Moines Register for many, many, many years. Um, one of the main Ragbri reporters, one of the two, along with John Karras during that time. And at this time, though, when he wrote this article, he was a quote unquote register staff writer, which is his byline on the article. And this article is from July 7th, 1977. So Ragbri would have been around for a handful of years at this point. The title of this article is How Will Clarence Pickard Scratch His Itch This Time by Chuck Offenberger in Indianola, Iowa. This is the time of year when Clarence Pickard, now 87, gets the itch. In 1973, he scratched it by riding his bicycle across the state in the Register's Great Six-Day Bike Trip. Pickard became a statewide celebrity. Last year, he scratched it by starting a 4,200-mile bike ride on the Bike Centennial Trip across America. He was a month on the road from Virginia to Farmingham, Missouri, before a case of bronchitis and the urgings of his family forced him to quit. This year, Pickard says he'll probably scratch with a little less moxie. I'll have to tell you, my family objects to me going on any long bike trip, and I now find that I don't have all the responsibility for what I do in my own hands anymore, Pickard said in a recent interview in his home here. He said what that means is that he probably will not try to ride on the Register's annual Great Bike Ride across Iowa 5, July 31st through August 6th from Onawa to Lansing. Pickard said he's now closely heeding the medical advice of his son, Jack, who is a doctor in Columbia, Missouri. I wouldn't try the entire Iowa ride without his permission, Clarence said. I don't think he would be inclined to allow me to ride the whole week. But I expect that if I did some fast talking, I might talk him into a day or so on the trip. Pickard said he still rides his bicycle around Indianola some, but not quite as much as I used to. He said that he and his wife, Mildred, have been spending the summer tending the garden and reading. He still jogs half a mile each night about midnight, closing with a half a block sprint about as tight as I can go. He said that he's following a regular calisthenics program, too, doing pull-ups in the basement and doing push-ups during the television news while the commercials are showing. He said that lately he's been mentally absorbed with thoughts on how world peace can be maintained. The Pickards have long been interested in the topic. When they both were in their 70s, they served a two-year stint in the Peace Corps in India. Now, said Pickard, he sees some necessity for putting some authority in the United Nations to maintain peace. I get some of my best thoughts on the subject while I'm out jogging and my lungs are full of fresh air, he said. Then I come in and make notes about it. Maybe, he said, I'll have time to launch some new movement. So there you go, jogging in, at 87 every day. I mean, at midnight, that's a lot. And he's attempted to ride across the U.S., um, plus a stint at the Peace Corps in his 70s with his wife. I mean, that's incredible. So needless to say, he was active into his later years. Now we skip ahead about five years to December 23, 1982. So just days before Christmas, if you celebrate Christmas, um, we have the unfortunate news of Clarence Pickard's death. And knowing Pickard, he couldn't fade quietly into the night. He had to go out in some notable way. And I'll tell you, this is notable, although unfortunately so. All right, I'm going to jump right in. Car Kills Pickard, 92, I Was Folk Hero Cyclist by Ken Fusion. Clarence Pickard, the 92-year-old Indianola man who pedaled to folk hero status with his 10-speed bicycle, silver pith helmet, and unabashed zest for life, was killed Wednesday night after he was struck by a car near his home, authorities said. Pickard was pronounced dead about 7 p.m. Wednesday at Iowa Methodist Medical Center from multiple injuries suffered about two hours earlier, said Polk County Medical Examiner Dr. R.C. Wooters. 
Indianola police officer Keith Moore said the accident occurred about 5 p.m. at the intersection of Iowa Highway 65 and 69 at East Clinton Street as Pickard was attempting to cross the highway on foot. Moore said the driver of the car was Scott Dillard, 20, of rural Indianola. No charges were filed in the accident, Moore said. The officer said Pickard apparently misjudged the distance required to cross the highway and the speed of the car. An autopsy will be conducted today, Wooter said, but he added that Pickard probably died of chest injuries. Pickard, who had been dubbed Iowa's oldest media star, captured the heart of the state in 1973 by completing what was then called the Great Six-Day Bike Trip Across Iowa, the first of the annual cross-state bicycle treks supported by the Des Moines Register. With little bicycling experience and a green 10-speed Schwinn he bought secondhand for $150 the day before the trip started, the colorful Pickard finished the 460-mile trip from Sioux City to Davenport. At the time, Pickard said, I hadn't had any vacation, and so I thought this might be a good trip for me to make. I thought riding a bicycle across Iowa would be a way of doing some good. I don't know just exactly what good, other than seeing my state and meeting young people. From then on, Pickard and bicycling would be forever paired. By the end of the day, register columnist Donald Call wrote of the feat, Everyone's tired and hates each other, but the one thing that keeps you going is that long after you've quit riding, somewhere back there, still riding, is Mr. Pickard, and he's smiling. He's 83 years old, and if he can make it, then, by God, the rest of us can too. John Karras, a columnist for the Des Moines Sunday Register, who, along with Call, founded the annual Bicycle Trips, said Wednesday that Pickard was one of those rare people who never lost his enthusiasm for life. Karras said, that people would line the route of the 1973 bike ride for a glimpse at Pickard. By the end of the week, that first bike ride, he had become a folk hero throughout the state, Kara said. What he did was perceived at the time as being almost impossible. At one point, Kara said, students were dismissed from classes at an Iowa City elementary school to applaud Pickard. He promptly fell off his bike, said Kara, who said that was perhaps Pickard's only weakness. So he got up, took off that pith helmet with the duct tape on it, and made a great sweeping bow. The place went wild. Pickard had said that he followed a regular regimen that included light breakfasts and lunches, jogging a half mile, and a distaste for sleep. I hate to lose the time. After the first bike trek, during which Call called Pickard, then 83, a national hero, Pickard rode in several charity events and spoke to assorted groups across the state, including residents of retirement homes to offer his secret for staying in shape. Pickard had said his topics also included conservation of natural resources, good citizenship, and world peace. He and his wife, Mildred, served two years in India in the Peace Corps while they were both in their 70s. In 1976, he embarked on a bike centennial, a 4,200-mile trip from Virginia to Oregon, but quit in Farmington, Missouri, at the urging of his family after developing bronchitis. Born in the Kansas Flint Hills, Pickard moved to Iowa as a boy. He was graduated from Simpson College in 1916 and received a master's degree in agronomy from Iowa State University in Ames. He worked most of his life as a farmer. My hope is that wherever I stop, Pickard told a reporter in 1976, I will leave a little seed that will take root and grow, sort of like Johnny Appleseed. So that's his obituary in the paper and his the article about how he passed. I find it interesting that he died while jogging outside um, by a vehicle accident. Um, I have no idea where to place the blame here because it was only 5 p.m., but being December, it was pretty dark at 5 p.m. But no person on foot should ever be killed by a car, and I feel for the 20-year-old who hit him with the car. He must have been scarred for life. I mean, probably still scarred. He's probably still alive now. But anyway, I don't want to speculate too much, but it's just a really sad way for someone to go. However, he passed doing what he loved, which was exercising outside. So I really love his sentiment of spreading the seeds of change throughout wherever you go and being just what sounds like an all around positive and driven person trying to make a positive, a good change for his community. The article ran with a really cute picture of Pickard wearing his pith helmet on his ladies Schwinn bicycle, wearing a pair of Chuck Taylor's high tops riding ragbri. Um, this guy knew how to do it right. It's time for a training tip. Cycling is a dynamic sport, meaning no two bike rides are ever the same. While on a ride, you can experience a wide variety of terrain, speed, and physical demands. 
Now is the time to start training your body and your mind to make small changes that will improve your future bike rides. Long rides on the indoor trainer are setting you up for success for once it's time to be outside again. If you plan to ride your bike across Iowa in July, you have to get your body and your booty ready for long days in the saddle. You can also use this time to challenge yourself to make small changes. For example, if you're on a long indoor ride, maybe every 15 minutes, you move into a higher gear and pedal harder for 15 to 30 seconds. Or, change into an easier gear and spin, spin, spin fast for 15 to 30 seconds and do it over and over again. These are simple skills that help you use your muscles in different ways. And if you practice over and over, you're going to continue to gain strength and power. And before you know it, those steep hills won't seem as steep as they used to be. And if maybe you're not on the indoor trainer and you're spending more time in the winter on your feet instead of your bike, you can pretty much do the same thing by changing up your walking speed during the course of your walk. Sometimes go faster, sometimes go slower, and maybe don't always pick the flattest route. Okay, are those shoulders dropped down? I hope so. Let's get back to the show. Okay, so my follow-up article to that, in the last article that I have, I guess I in the intro I said I had four articles, but I was miscounted. It's only three. Chuck Offenberger is writing um, as Iowa boy, and this is his very first RAGBRAI as the RAGBRAI reporter, the RAGBRAI columnist. Donald Call had just called it quits for RAGBRAI on to bigger and better things, or b- bigger and other things. We won't say better. But... Um, I just thought it was really sweet that they dedicated the next RAGBRAI to him, and um, and it was at such a historic time in RAGBRAI's history, so it really marked a changing of the guard um, at that time period, and I just really love the glimpse into RAGBRAI that this, I always love these articles on RAGBRAI, where these uh, reporters are really in the trenches, and they have written a long way, and they have to try to form a coherent sentence after all that cycling. Um, I just think it really shows a lot of character and what Ragbri was really like and um, just, yeah, like a little window into what it was like at that time. So let me jump back into um, this article and it's called This Ride Belongs to Mr. Pickard by Chuck Offenberger on Monday, July 25th, 1983 from Onawa, Iowa, which is the starting point of that year's Ragbri. A question a lot of them had here was, what does a crowd of 7,000 bicycle riders with all kinds of camping gear look like? The answer? Enormous. I guess maybe Lauren Buol, an Iowa State Patrol trooper from Albia, put it best Saturday night. Ragbri is like the Grand Canyon, and that no matter how much you've read or heard about it, you still don't believe how big it is until you see it. Strange then, isn't it, that this huge thing is really the legacy of a little old Clarence Pickard, who is barely 5 feet 6 inches tall and 115 pounds? This is his bicycle ride. Formerly it is, because after his death at age 92 last December, the Des Moines Register added Clarence Pickard Memorial Ride to the name of this year's RAGBRAI. But beyond all formalities, it is still his ride. Donald Call and John Karras, RAGBRAI's daddies, have said it before. And as we begin Mr. Pickard's ride, everyone always called him Mr. Pickard. It is good to say it again. He is why this little ride across the state that might attract a couple hundred hardcore bicycle nuts became a full-blown, beautiful folk festival that involves thousands of people from coast to coast and then some. Mr. Pickard, we agreed in a chat Saturday night, created a mellow monster. How? By surprising everyone. At the age of 83, he came from his Indianola home to Sioux City in 1973 to start the first ride. Then he shocked everyone by completing the whole week-long ride. Shocked them into realizing that, hey, if this old guy can do it, we can too. That's why each year brings out more lards like me who have virtually no bicycling experience. All right, let's go to Dubuque. Mr. Pickard had been an unusual cat all his life. A farmer, county extension agent, philosopher, writer, and along with his wife Mildred when they were in their 70s, Peace Corps a volunteer in India. As greater age came, he campaigned for the elderly to get up and do something with their talents. Is that why he went on that first bike ride across Iowa? 
No, not really, said Mildred, now 88 and living in a retirement center in Columbia, Missouri, in a telephone visit. It was a spur-of-the-moment decision he made. He decided it would be an excellent opportunity to see the condition of blooming or ripening the crops were in at that particular time, and that it would also provide a nice way to meet some young people. Would she give us some kind of charge, some kind of guide words to carry through the hills and valleys? Have fun. She consulted with her son, Clarence, 59, a physician in Columbia, and together they have come up with this. Have fun. Get a good look at your state. It's a wonderful thing for people to be together and do something like this. Dad certainly would be gratified that you write in his name this year. Mildred said that she and her husband were astonished at the media coverage and subsequent fame that his bicycle riding brought. Indeed, he became a star. We didn't consider him that, though, she said. We were just pleased that people looked to him kindly and didn't consider him to be wasting his time or making a fool of himself. When they would say that he was a rather bright, unusual fellow, well, it was something I always known, but I still enjoyed hearing them say it. He did not try to become any kind of star, but he did realize that when the reporters came around, he always had to answer their questions. I always thought he bore up bravely under both criticism and the applause. Perhaps the Pickards mistook curiosity for criticism, for indeed, there was curiosity back then about the old bike rider in the silver pith helmet and the high-top black tennis shoes, pedaling ever so slowly across Iowa. During that first ride, I was dispatched to do the first interview of any length with Mr. Pickard. We talked in the coffee shop of a restaurant on a stopover in Des Moines. In his measured, witty way, he coyly informed me of a secret weapon that would enable him to withstand the severe heat and complete the ride. He said that he would save this scoop for some appropriate interview. A 45-minute oration finally convinced him that this was the appropriate interview. He unbuttoned the collar of his long sleeve shirt, looked around to see if anyone were watching, then showed me what was underneath. He was wearing a wool sweater. Insulates my skin from the heat, he said. If the heat gets to your skin, it results in what is happening to so many of these kids on the ride. You get all pooed out. This is my secret weapon. I've never forgotten that moment. So as I go out to begin my first ride, I've got a secret weapon, just as all the riders do. Wool sweaters? No. Our secret weapon is the memory of Clarence Pickard. If he could do it, we can do it too. Onawa is a great place to start one of these rides. For one thing, it is flat, giving uneasy riders like me some reassurance that bicycling can be fun. What, you say? There are big hills to the east? Sorry, I can't hear you. Anawa has also been a ragbri starting point one other time, and the local people here handled the massive crowd this year with ease. There is great hospitality, good food, nice entertainment. Gosh, these host towns put up with a lot. Anawa Chamber of Commerce President Vaughn Barsby spent all day and all night Saturday standing in the middle of a street, directing traffic and answering questions. Toward dusk, I asked him what the dumbest question he heard all day was. Barsby. This guy came up to me and said, where's my tent? I lost it. He'd set it up, gone to town, and forgotten where it was. The early leader in the best t-shirt derby is Al Culbert, 43, of Charles City, who's walking around wearing one that says, Dubuque or puke. But I also like Bill Hesse's. This Dubuque music teacher has a shirt that hails Iowa as home of punk polka. The Iowa boy best bet to sample the real flavor of Iowa on today's route a stop in Little Hamlin on the way to Guthrie Center. The small crossroads community decided three years ago that just because it's not officially incorporated as a town is no reason that it shouldn't have a mayor. So the folks elected one, Darren Munch, who was then 11 years old. Now, at the grand old age of 14, he's still the mayor because we haven't had another election. He could be in political trouble, though. Two weeks ago, a farmer parked his truck too close to Darren's dad's tavern. So the mayor went out and left a handwritten traffic ticket for three bucks. Shake Hisner's hand, hear his story, and you'll be getting a slice of life in small town Iowa at its nonsensical best. And that's the article. Um, I think it's really interesting that there was such a fanfare about Pickard riding in his early 80s when today it's common. There are tons of riders who do rag ride in their 80s. Um, and most of them are faster than me, to be honest. So he was a trailblazer, he was a trailblazer in more than ways than one also sporting the casual clothing. And it's so interesting that he was wearing a wool, essentially Jersey 
which is what the earliest bike jerseys were made of. I don't know if he was aware of that or not, but um, something that people still wear today as their secret weapon uh, for bike riding. So I hope you enjoyed these articles. Um, The articles that Offenberger writes his first year in 1983 are really interesting, really cool, and he has a fun dialogue with John Karras. So maybe I'll come back and read these to you um, down the line if there's some interest for it. I don't know if any of you have seen it, but the 1983 Ragbri patch does have a Clarence Pickard pith helmet on it and a little tribute to him um, right there on the patch. I don't know if we have any left in our inventory to sell anymore, but just kind of a fun fact for you. I hope you enjoyed my Clarence Pickard series. Uh, There are a couple more stories about that if you're interested in more about Clarence Pickard. Or perhaps, like I said, I'll talk about Offenberger and Karis here in the future. Who knows where Parrot Talk will go? You are welcome to please send feedback to Just Go Bike on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Or you're always welcome to email us at justgobikepodcast at gmail.com. We've reached the end of another Parrot Talk. I'll squawk at you later. Well, listeners, that is it for this week. We both want to thank you for tuning in to listen to the Just Go Bike podcast. And if you'd like to contact us with a comment about the podcast, or maybe you have a topic in mind, you can reach us at justgobikepodcast at gmail.com, or you can also follow us on social media at Just Go Bike on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast, especially if you're a fan. And if you have any extra time, pop on over to the Morphology Podcast for more bike adventure interviews. All right, that's a wrap. We'll be back next week. Until then, just just go bike! bike!